Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly media briefing on COVID-19. I'm Carrie Schutte. I'm a spokesperson for the Unified Command. I'll start with our numbers. Um, and right now, as of today, we have 32 confirmed cases in Shasta County, including none from yesterday. We've done 2,299 total tests. We have one person in isolation, seven in quarantine, and we have zero in the hospital right now, which is great news. Um, we've had a total of four deaths um, from COVID-19 here in Shasta County. Um, I'll do a round of introductions and then um, ask anyone who'd like to share any updates to do so. Today with us, we have Donnell Eworth, the director of the Shasta County Health and Human Services Agency, Dr. Karen Ramstrom, our Shasta County Health Officer, Matt Pontus, our CEO of Shasta County, Sheriff Eric Mugrini, and then from our hospitals, we have Valerie Lakey from Mayor's Memorial Hospital District, Mark Mitchelson from Shasta Regional Medical Center, Jennifer Andrea from Mountain Valleys, and I know Mercy's trying to log in, they're having some technical difficulties, so they might join us in a bit. Um, do any of you folks have anything that you would like to share with us today? Hey guys, uh, actually for Shasta Regional, we just wanted to wish everybody happy uh, hospital week, National House Hospital Week is this week. Uh, so just uh, some appreciation for all the healthcare workers out there. Um, also, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, talking to a lot of the community clinics, we have a lot of hesitation within the community to go seek healthcare at this time. And just wanted to make sure that we encourage everybody in town that we are uh, have a lot of safeguards in place. Uh, and, you know, don't wait for us uh, seeking medical care. Um, that you know, just you know, get the treatment that's needed and don't be fearful of coming into the hospital. I would like to just um, tag on to that a bit and wish everyone happy hospital week. This has been a week that normally hospital week, we do a lot of activities, so it's been a little bit different this year, but we're still trying to really recognize all of our staff and just the commitment and dedication that they've shown over the last few months. And to also add with the taking care of yourself and the hospitals are ready. We're ready to see you. We're ready to care for you. We have seen an uptick in some of our emergency room visits. So I think that there is some confidence in what we're doing. But just if there's something that you need to be seen for, make sure you do go to your clinic or your hospital and take care of yourself. We're, we're prepared and we're ready and we're here to help you. Good morning, everybody. Uh Thank you for that. That was nice hearing from our hospitals about hospital week. Uh, so um, I um, wanted to um, share the good news today. I think people may be aware that our variance um, for the county was approved, which means um, the state health department um, has approved us to move fully through stage two. And uh, so that's a big win for us. And um, we've been working hard um, here at the emergency operations center um, and working across sectors um, through our Roadmap to Recovery Advisory Committee to um, make sure we have guidance um, online and we have staff available to help um, when there are questions about um, from businesses and other sectors about um, what they can be doing. And so that's a really, really exciting news. Um, I did want to also let the public know that there is information on our website um, in, uh, that kind of describes what consumers should look like, look for, I'm sorry, when you're going into businesses or other um, uh, venues that have opened up in stage two. Um, and also I would suggest, you know, just have some patience. Um, you know, I think this is a new experience for everybody and we know many of um, these sectors that are opening, they really want to do a good job and do it the right way. And so they're moving very um, thoughtfully and methodically. And um, it might take a while for them to have um, more streamlined processes in place. Um, so please be patient. And um, also, if there's something that you're not sure about, that you're wondering if that they're doing or that you're wondering if they should be doing, um, bring it up with them. And, um, you know, I think that we're all going to be in a, lear in a learning uh, process for a while. Um, these modifications are going to be with us um, for for the foreseeable future, and so um, there will be new habits that we're all developing. Um, I would also suggest when you're out and about and uh, experiencing these um, venues that are now open that you 
Um, also take steps to protect yourself. If you're in an area where you can't maintain physical distancing of at least six feet, uh, please um, wear a cloth face covering. So I think those are the main things that I had today. Um, as well as, you know, just a reminder that we're able to open up these businesses because we're still holding off on some other things that we're, we're going to need to sacrifice for a bit longer, um, including um, large gatherings as well as non-essential travel. So letting those pieces go for now will allow us to, um, our low risk businesses to get back up and going, which is really a priority for our community and for all of us. So um, uh, those uh, experiences that, we all have, you know, traditionally look forward to um, that might involve group gatherings. We're going to have to get creative and do in different ways, um, whether it's, um, you know, holding off on going to in-person um, religious services or holding off um, or even deferring or doing differently our graduation ceremonies. Um, those sorts of things um, are going to have to be on hold for now um, so that we can allow our businesses to open. That's all I have. Thanks. All right, thank you, Dr. Rams. From anybody else? Donnell. Yes, well, I would like to wish the hospitals happy hospital week. Uh, I did not know about that until this moment, but uh, we have great hospitals in Shasta County, and uh, we've been very grateful for their collaboration in this COVID crisis. So we do wish all of them a happy week, and we thank all the healthcare workers and other workers in the hospitals for all, the, all they've done to protect our community and prepare for surge. I also wanted to mention that it is Mental Health Month, and normally we have some celebratory activities related to that, but of course this year is not happening because uh, we are not having mass gatherings. Mass gatherings are not allowed, so uh, we can celebrate in the way we have in the past. But I just wanted to let everybody know that there is a link uh, on our jasteready.org website called Taking Care of Yourself Under Resources. And there's some good tips in there if you're kind of feeling the stress of being at home all this time which would be totally normal uh, there are some good tips on there for uh, getting exercise and unplugging from the news and uh, one other thing i wanted to add is you know there is a way to stay in touch with your friends of course everyone knows about these online resources uh, where you can get a video link with your friends and family and we do encourage that you know to keep in touch it's very important under normal circumstances, we of course would be encouraging as much social contact as possible because that is really good for us. But right now we have to find these other creative ways to do so. So uh, I just wanna wish everybody happy Mental Health Month. All right, anybody else before we open to media questions? Okay, we are ready for your questions, media partners. All right, I'll jump right in. First, Don L, I'm not okay. going to take the uh, the comment about uh, unplugging from the news personally. I just won't. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I'm not sure for who from the county. Uh, with the uh, the variants granted now, um, what effect, if any, did the rodeo have? I can comment a little bit to that. Um, it did have an impact. Uh, as we put out, uh, as you saw through the, the message that went out through Unified Command. And um, if you're tuned to the board of supervisor meeting yesterday, um, it did have an impact. It, it created some extra hurdles that we had to uh, navigate in order to uh, get our late variants yesterday. But nonetheless, we were successful you know, due to the hard work of public health and the doctor having the plan put together and ready to go. So. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. Yeah, that's uh, that's good to see. Um, maybe Dr. Ramstrom, I'm not sure who exactly, but could you describe a little bit as far as what uh, the stores that are open? Can I just walk in now with a cloth mask? Is it? It's not just curbside now. I can go in. And how about the, the, the Mount Shasta Mall? Do we know yet uh, their situation? And, and is that going to be open? So uh, malls are listed. Um, I do not know the status of the mall right now, if they're prepared or if they're open yet. Um, others may know. Um, um, there is um, guidance um, for those types of um, establishments 
As far as retail, um, uh, so this, the way that the state structured stage two was that um, drive up retail was the um, initial offering. And then when we, um, we success, successfully um, were granted our variance, um, we're able to have uh, in-store retail available as well, though um, businesses can continue to use that drive up option depending on what their venue is like it might be a better option for them if they can't ensure physical distancing within their um, setting so but uh, yes we're able to um, use re retail um, stores now but is it up to the business as far as uh, how many people can come in at a time do you need to wear a mask or or is it just kind of back to more you know in quotes normal so for any uh, establishment that has opened up, all of these sectors that have opened up in stage two, all of them are with adaptations. And so, uh, as I said earlier, you know, we're going to we're going to be experiencing all of these um, types of uh, settings and activities differently now because we have to integrate physical distancing, um, environmental cleaning. Um, the way that we actually um, have transactions, all of that's going to be different now. And so um, there is guidance on um, the state website as well as on uh, Shasta Ready um, for the different sectors and what that looks like. And um, so that's where details could be can be found about what you should be expecting. Um, but it's the general principles that you're going to find across the board. And each um, entity is going to have to implement them in a, in a little bit of a different way. Um, but physical distancing, um, cloth face coverings, um, extra environmental cleaning, hand hygiene, hygiene, um, having workers stay away if they're sick or have any symptoms. Um, those are the kinds of things that you're going to see across the board. And restaurants, we can get into restaurants now, again, with adaptations. With adaptations. With adaptations in um, limited group size and limited um, who who can actually be together because you know there's no uh, gatherings yet and so at this point um, the state guidance indicates that uh, restaurants should be serving to um, individuals who are normally in contact and primarily household contact so but in uh, groups up to uh, ten sizes of ten and um, but I think that we're all really really pleased to be able to um, you know, get back to enjoying um, some dine-in um, restaurant experiences. Thank you, doctor. Mike, I wanted to add that um, if you wanted to uh, see the guidance for all of the different um, industries, we've tried to make it really easy for business owners to find the, the guidance and checklists so that they can get up to, to speed as quickly as possible. If you go to ShastaReady.org and then click on the Roadmap to Recovery, Right next to each of the industries that's open, there should be um, a checklist and guidelines for the various businesses, which which we hope um, will be helpful. Thanks, Gary. Hey, Yvette, other questions? Hi, yes, my name is Karen Alvarez with Action News Now. This is a question for Sheriff McGreeny. Um, Sheriff, regarding, we hear a lot about educational approach, taking the educational approach, and obviously after what happened with the rodeo, do you have a new approach about how to talk to business? Well, businesses, those that are still um, not allowed to reopen their doors, is it still the educational approach? Yes, and we've done, we've been very successful in working with our local businesses and taking that educational approach. Um, obviously, uh, things ramped up this weekend. I think a lot of it was just due to social media and uh, just, people are wanting and ready to get out and have some sense of normalcy. Uh, we'll continue to work with our businesses. We had a few other ones that have uh, come to light and we've able, been able to effectively communicate with them and um, work out some agreements to postpone things for later dates. So uh, for all intents and purposes, this has been a successful approach and we'll continue to use it. And if you could just go more into detail, I guess, about this educational approach, an example, do you talk to businesses or what is this approach exactly? It, it is. It's all about communication, a person to person communication, which is always uh, effective, um, most effective method. 
and it's just uh, identifying what the intent is, what the um, the necessity is, and if it's something that can be postponed and, and wait, uh, and explain to them the county's perspective and the, and the things that we are trying to do to help our local businesses be successful and get back on track. And I think that's the most important thing is we want to be successful for everyone. We want our local business owners to be able to get some get their businesses back, which we were able to do this week, which is a, a great step forward. And uh, again, our, our new call to action needs to be, let's get out and, and keep these businesses going. And we don't need to do anything that will take us backwards in that. So, uh, and looking at the looking at things globally, and I know just as our human nature to uh, kind of look inside a lot and how it affects us. But once we paint that picture and Try to work together as a community uh, it's been a very successful method now for these non-essential businesses that may be reopening see the rodeo as an example hey they got away with it um will law enforcement continue that educational approach or will um become will law enforcement become stricter I, i'm asking because there are some businesses that i have seen hair salons nail salons that are starting to reopen um and may see the rodeo as hey they got away with it i think we can too or is this will this approach be continuing the educational approach yeah and we we continue like i said this is the rodeo in my opinion was an exception um where we've had great success in working with a lot of our uh other business owners um i can only speak jurisdictionally for myself and i don't want to speak for the uh, chiefs and City of Reading, City of Anderson, um, and we'll continue with what we've been doing and the success that we've gained through uh, communication. And just just curious, I guess, because it, it is a big, big topic, the rodeo. Um, did you did you think of sending law enforcement? to patrol the grounds at any point did that ever um was that that ever an option uh, nothing's off the table uh, as i mentioned earlier I, no one anticipated that large of a crowd and uh once we were came to realize the following day the numbers that uh, came out in support of that rodeo um, by then obviously uh, it was a day late um, and even if we had tried to attempt something on the day of, uh, with three deputies uh, working on the street and a uh, crowd that large, <laughs> I don't know the success that would have been. Yeah. And let's say, <laughs> I mean, we, we never know in the future. Um, may, right now we're talking about no mass gatherings and we kept talking about no mass gatherings. Obviously the rodeo happened. Um, do you, let's say for a next event if a mass gathering were to uh happen what what will law enforcement do will law enforcement actually crack down this time or continue that educational approach that you talk of uh you're assuming that we're going to have another mass gathering <laughs> I, I, you know, that we you are know. not going to and that we're going to be responsible and allow these local businesses the opportunity to um gain back some of their customers, not that they lost me, gain back some of their economic uh, loss and and flourish and, and uh, let's support those businesses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Other questions? I have sort of a related follow-up question for Sheriff McGreeny. Obviously, everybody, like she said, is wondering about this. This is a big hot topic in town, and a lot of people are kind of falling on either side of the debate. Um, I just want a little more clarity, if possible. I feel like we keep talking about, are you going to educate or enforce, yes or no? And can you just elaborate on your thought process and why you're pro-education, even though some other jurisdictions are doing enforcement, even in, I think, Red Bluff, it's not even just necessarily a oh, those, those guys down in the Bay Area thing. So can you just, uh, you know, explain a little bit more your position on that? Sure, and, and I can continue with this today, uh, right now in the forum, if it would be easier for everyone involved, because we have a lot of our medical professionals involved, um, we can table this and, and revisit it later this afternoon if that would be easier. I just don't want to 
make waste of, uh, we have a lot of medical professionals on this and I value their time as well. And if we could keep this COVID, I can address uh, you guys after this call, if that would suffice. That would work for me, uh, sure. Thank yeah, you, just, sure. Um, if, uh, yeah, just reach out to me after this. Yeah, that's oh, like question. To... Sorry, uh, go ahead, Donnie. Uh, I'd like to follow up on that. I, I know you'd probably like to table this until later, but I think this is a health issue about the rodeo. And so my question is, so let's say Health and Human Services makes a recommendation to say a rodeo not to happen. So they recommend no, and then the people go ahead and do it. I think there's a drag strip race they're talking about this weekend. Can you head that off at the pass and have a list of places that Health and Human Services has said don't do it? And then you can enforce it before it happens instead of waiting for a couple of thousand people to show up. So I, I think it's a vital topic. And I know the public wants to hear about this now too. Yeah, Donnie, and, and, and related to the drag strip, we've already addressed that. Uh, there's been other events um, that we have addressed and continue to address, and we do work with public health uh, daily. We're in unified command. And so we work, uh, behind the scenes a lot and a lot of these things don't culminate to a uh, public forum that we are successful in mitigating at a lower level. And, and I, I just let, would like to weigh in too. I, I really would like to recognize that, you know, with this unified command and working with the sheriff, you know, we have these conversations every day as Sheriff McGreeny said, and, you know, we, um, try and address that on a case-by-case -case basis and have been very successful um, with the one exception as um, the sheriff uh, mentioned um, to date. And so we're gonna continue to do that. We have a whole team here at the EOC that are working with businesses and other sectors to ensure they know what the guidance is and trying, and most of them really want to try and do it the right way. Um, and so um, that's really what our, our focus is. I, I um, am like you concerned that and uh, hope that we do not have another situation um, like last weekend. Um, I would also say that I think it's up to all of us to not partake in uh, activities that are prohibited right now because that actually impacts our businesses. We are holding off on mass gatherings and non-essential travel so that we actually have the capacity to do disease containment as our numbers are likely going to slowly tick up as we have our businesses open. And so um, we are all going to have to sacrifice and uh, let those activities go. And that's up to us. That's up to every single one of us to have that be responsible and not partake in those activities that are currently prohibited because we're all doing that in order to let our business community um, resume um, their, their, um, their businesses. So um and you know if, if we can all get on board i think that that will make a difference in terms of participation i'd like to jump in as well uh, and commend the sheriff for, for identifying many uh situations in the community that need to be addressed he's um quite active and familiar with social media and he does hear about things that are happening and takes actions so i you know i don't think it's a correct perception that he you know is just standing by there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes and i also want to commend uh, the two police chiefs because they've also taken actions on things that we've heard about so you know the the rodeo was um you know a violation of the state order it, it should not have happened uh but there have been many other things that have been headed off at the past so i i think that's important to understand and i think not only can we vote with our feet, as Karen, Dr. Ramstrom is suggesting, and I agree with that, uh, business owners can also call up folks if they hear that they're planning on doing mass gatherings to discourage that because that does endanger uh, all of the business community because if we have, if we have a large outbreak again, it, it does threaten our status in stage two. So we want to, uh, we all have to work together I just want to reiterate too, you know, there were comments made on online about if you don't feel safe at the rodeo, stay away, uh, you know, other people feeling safe and they attended. And with a communicable disease, that, that really uh, isn't pertinent because communicable diseases spread from 
person to person. So if you attend the an event and get infected and then go back home or go to work or uh, go out to the grocery store, you can infect others. So it, it isn't just that, you know, if you're afraid, stay away. People who stayed away could end up getting infected due to uh, some people attending. So we all have to do our part. It's really a matter of concern for others. And I know that our community is very well known for its caring nature. Uh, I think we all have experienced friends helping us out on a moment's notice, uh, taking care of us when we're sick, bringing us uh, food when we've lost a loved one. We have a very caring community. And right now, how we can implement that caring nature in ourselves is to uh, stay home as much as possible, go to the store for our essential needs, and get let's get folks back to work. Let's get businesses back open and um, so that we can uh, keep roofs over our heads, feed our families. That's the most important thing for us to do now is maintain our good health and uh, restore our community, have our community recover economically. Uh, Donnell. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Donnell, since you and uh, Dr. Ramstrom made an appeal to the attendees of that rodeo to get tested, uh, has there been uh, an increase in appointments made for testing at the Shasta College Station, or do you have access to that data? So I know um, our numbers were pretty high yesterday. The day before, they were lower. I don't know the correlation, though, with our call to recommending people get test tested. Um, we do have access to the numbers uh, each day of how many individuals are signed up and how many individuals attend the state testing site. I believe uh, Carrie Schutte reported that we had 96 people tested yesterday, or perhaps it was our operations chief. And that's in the range of the numbers that we've been seeing. Uh, so I, I don't know that it's significantly changed, but we do once again want to repeat that you can go to ShastaReady.org and you can get a link to the lab testing site at Shasta College and make an appointment. It's free of charge and any uh, anybody can get tested there, especially essential workers, but now that we are in stage two, any worker, uh, and of course, anyone who attended the rodeo, we do encourage them to go. Uh, and that includes people with no symptoms. So uh, that's one way uh, folks can uh, make amends for attending the rodeo is to go out and get tested so that we can identify anyone who might be infected and we can then prevent uh, the transmission from those individuals to others. If infection occurs, Did you say that testing is free of charge. Yes, it is free of charge. Uh, you know, of course, there is a cost, but that is being uh, taken care of by the state of California. But anyone who goes to the test site, there, there is no charge. Mike, did they charge you when you went there? Well, well, when we went, uh, when we went and toured the site, um, the uh, the woman who gave us the tour said otherwise. She said that that there was a charge that it would go uh, be uh, covered by our insurance or whatever. Yeah. She, she didn't say it was free. Yeah, they will bill insurance if you have insurance. If you don't have insurance, then there's there's no fee. There's also no copay. That was my understanding. Uh, I have an, a question for maybe Dr. Ramstrom. Um, it, it's semi-personal in, in nature. Um, how soon do you think we can get to phase three? Like, I really need a haircut. I'm right there with you. I need a haircut too. <laughs> I, uh, I think many of us are interested in getting hair salons on the list. Um, I think it's interesting that they're not listed anywhere right now. And so we are paying close attention to that. And um, as far as um, Moving through the stages, that's going to be data driven. And so um, I'm hoping maybe next week we'll have more information we can share on how we're going to be monitoring our data. And I know that the governor is going to be monitoring the data closely across the state to, to make any determinations about um, the speed with which we go from here. I would say that we just got our variants. It's really, it's really important that we see what happens with what we open now you know, and we'll be um, monitoring over the next two to four weeks and see if that if there's an impact on 
our um, case counts. And so I think we'll all be very interested to see what happens. The whole idea with this strategy for uh, limiting the spread is that we stayed home long enough that we got the numbers really, really low. And now we can slowly open up um, in a manner that allows us at public health to contain the cases that we have. We go too fast, we can't do that. So that's the idea. And so I would encourage everybody to um, let's do this right and um, go slow through stage two and uh, we'll see how that goes. Thank you. I have a question. I have one, one quick question about visitation. This is for the hospitals. Um, at hospitals, assisted living facilities, rehab hospitals, especially where elderly are and they haven't had visitors. What is the status for that right now? So, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I just ahead. want to jump in because we do have the skilled nursing facility at Mayor's Memorial Hospital, and we are just still holding with the no visitor policy and that will just have to be something that is um, day by day. We are trying to accommodate um, our residents with different options to stay in touch with their loved ones. But right now that skilled nursing facility population is very vulnerable. So we want to make sure that we keep them safe. So therefore at this point, we are still not allowing any visitors in our facility. And we'll just continue to follow the guidelines that are presented to us and make decisions based on those. I will say that at Mayors, we did implement our no visitors prior to the um, guidance coming out. We started that on March 6th, just because we wanted to get ahead of it with the protection of that vulnerable population that we have. So, but in the meantime, we're doing everything we can to be creative, to allow those residents to have, you know, some contact with their family members. We do Zoom calls, we've had drive-through parades, we do things through the windows. So we're trying to get as creative as possible there. And for uh, the hospitals, I know uh, Rob was mentioning this uh, last week or the week before, they're uh, opened up just slightly to pre-op uh, patients only. Uh, with us here at Shasta Regional, uh, we still have no uh, visitor policy on, except for end of life uh, uh, issues, but it will be probably one of the later restrictions that we lift just to make sure that there's no uh, potential risk to both staff and our patients. So yes, it's something that we continue to talk about. When do we uh, bring people back into the hospital for, for visitors? But it will be one of the later uh, restrictions that will probably lift at this point. In the meantime, similar to what Valerie was saying, using uh, apps for uh, connections such as FaceTime, WhatsApp, uh, WebEx, anything that we can do to make sure that our patients still have an ability to connect with uh, their family members. Uh, we're looking at many different alternatives. Other questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, I did want to clarify, Sheriff McGraney spoke earlier about the Unified Command, and I think many of you have been with us from the beginning of this situation, but I wanted to remind you what that meant. And so for the past six weeks, we've been um, Shasta County Health and Human Services, the Shasta County Sheriff's Office, and CAL FIRE, Shasta County Fire Department have been working together here in the Emergency Operations Center on this issue. So I just wanted to... to um, re-explain what that what that means is that all these decisions are being made by this group of people working together and that's how we've been able to to proceed so effectively through this situation so ready for unified command um any other questions or anything that any of our panelists would like to share before we leave i got a quick one i hope it's a quick one okay uh, Dr. Ramstrom, um, the testing so far is approximately roughly one per, about 1% 1 of the population of Shasta County. Um, what, what percentage would you be comfortable with in saying it's an adequate window of the situation? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question exactly. Um, 
Are you asking if we're testing enough people right now? I guess so. Um, how, what percentage of the population would provide uh, an adequate uh, an adequate picture for you to say how many people have this, how how infected the uh, the community is? Okay, I understand. So um, there's a couple things there. So one, the state testing site and our other capacity that we've worked hard to get in place is there in part because as we're opening up, we want to make sure that we have not only testing of um, sick individuals, but also some surveillance of people who are in in the in certain uh, areas in the workforce that have a lot of exposure with the public. And so testing those populations on a regular basis um, is recommended in order to identify early if there's disease so it, we can stop it. Um, I think that what you're getting at is community immunity. And um, we um, will not have community immunity until we have a vaccine that's available. Um, the reality is if you actually just do the math and apply it to our county's population, um, using that statistic that 80% have more mild symptoms and 20% have either um, you know, severe or likely hospitalization or even really extreme disease or death, you know, we would have to have about 25,000 people, um, that's 20% of our population, 25,000 people infected um, and really, really very sick to get to the level of immunity, which is about 70% or so. So that's not the way to get community immunity. And so um, right now we're just going slow and the testing that we're using right now and really emphasizing is trying to make sure that we're testing certain groups on a more regular basis or individuals who've had contact with cases, that kind of a thing, so that we can actually do containment really quick. Okay, thanks. All right, if we don't have any other, oh, sorry, Donnell, go ahead. Yeah, th um, this is a little off topic. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I just wanted to uh, clarify something that I think may, there may be some misunderstanding about in the community. And um, what is the state's role and what is the county's role in relation to some of the measures that have been taken related to COVID-19. And I wanna you know, say that we, we do have unified command, as Carrie mentioned, with uh, Cal Fire, Shasta County uh, Sheriff's Office and HHSA here in Shasta County. And the, and the state has its own disaster response through the Office of Emergency Services. And um, so th there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. But and we, we're grateful the state has provided us with some resources. They provide us with the federal medical station. They provide us with the state testing site. And those are fa fabulous resources that have really helped us. Um, we've also stood up a great deal of resources locally of over 100 people that work in our emergency operations center, for example. Uh, as far as the, the health officer orders related to the stay at home order and other restrictions on movement, that order was uh, put out by the state health officer. Some counties, have had their local health officer issue additional orders that were more restrictive. And I just wanna clarify that that has not happened in Shasta County. Dr. Ramstrom has not issued any additional restrictions and worked tirelessly last week to uh, do the attestation necessary for us to move into full stage two. So she has been a great advocate for uh, both protecting health and protecting our economic interests has worked very closely with Jake Mangus at the Reading Chamber of Commerce. And um, the only health officer order she has issued uh, other than isolation of quarantine orders was the order to establish the Road Recovery Advisory Committee. So I just think that is important to note um, that um, the, the measures that are in place related to COVID-19 are have been promulgated by the state of California. And our job is to, you know, assure that those are in place in our county, but we have not added anything more restrictive than what the state has implemented. Thank you, Donnell. We'll give one more commercial for our testing. If you go to ShastaReady.org and click on Get a Test, our incident commander went yesterday. She had made an appointment the prior day. It took her eight minutes from the time that the, she got there to the time that she was in her car going home. So it's easy, it's quick, it's free. What's not to love? All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. And we will be back again next Wednesday. Oh, looks like she has a question. Oh. Or next question. Sorry, go ahead. 
I have one more thing. So not only is it um, hospital week and mental health month, but it's Dylan and Cooper's birthday today. And so I just want to say happy birthday, Dylan and Cooper. Anybody else who wants to join me and say happy birthday, Dylan and Cooper, please do. They're my nephews. They're 10 today. And uh, I told them that I would say uh, hello and happy birthday on our press briefing today. So <laughs> happy birthday, boys. That's awesome. Happy birthday, Dylan and Cooper. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again uh, next week at 11 a.m. on Wednesday at this very same place. Stay safe and healthy. We'll see you next week.